All right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Currently reporting from Aria, one of my favorite properties on the Las Vegas Strip. And it's actually one that holds a special place in my heart because the first time I ever came to Vegas, I stayed at Aria with a few buddies and I remember being so impressed by everything about the city. And not much has changed. Every time I come here, I'm like, God damn, this place is so cool. But anyway, we're not here as uh, sightseers. I'm actually playing a big game here at the uh, poker room. It's 5100 no limit, which is a pretty big game, at least for me when it comes to Vegas. I don't usually go crazy when I come here. At most like 510 or 1020 for the most part. But it's a private game that I've been invited to and I've heard some fun things about it. So without any further ado, let's jump in there and see how it goes. I'm gonna be playing with a bunch of people I've never met. So uh, not sure what to expect. I'll check in with you guys after the session. Right, guys here we go once more today we're playing 5100 at aria a world famous poker room if you will and we are in for twenty thousand dollars in the first interesting hand i open pocket queens from early position good start to the day i make it three hundred dollars but then a player in late position makes it fifteen hundred back around to me and i'm gonna play this hand rather straightforward I've got pocket queens, it's one of the best starting hands and we are out of position, so I think another raise is in order, especially versus a player type who seems like an action type of guy. So I make it 4300 and he makes the call, so we're going out of position, heads up to a flop, already a big pot to start the day. It comes down ace, 10, deuce with two clubs. About as bad as it gets for pocket queens given all this pre-flop action. Nevertheless, I would be betting almost all my hands for a small size on this kind of board. So that's what I do, 2400 into the pot. My opponent makes the call, probably gonna shut it down at this point, but then the turn comes the queen of clubs. So that's pretty sweet. We improved to a set on a board that otherwise looked pretty miserable. However, I still think the best play is to check. My opponent is gonna have flushes more often than I will. And even if he's got a worse hand, we could allow him to value bet or even start bluffing with other holdings. So I check it over to him and he wastes no time in jamming all in for $13,000 around a pot sized bet. And well, there's not much analysis to be had here. Of course, we are losing to flushes and maybe even the occasional straight. But that aside, he could be bluffing. He could be value betting a worse hand like pocket tens or ace 10, for example. So I don't think too long before making the call. Even if we are up against a flush or a straight, we've got outs, right? A full house is certainly not out of the question. We decide to run it twice. Pot is nearly $40,000. The first river is the nine of spades. The second one is the deuce of hearts. And we end up chopping versus king jack offsuit. So this guy is not here to mess around. King Jack unsuited, putting in a bunch of money pre-flop, and then we get the perfect board to get all the chips in the middle, a straight versus a set. We got lucky on the second one, make a full house and chop it up. In the second interesting hand, I put on the straddle for $200. There's a middle position open to 600, and then the big blind makes the call before I look down at ace king. Obviously gonna be raising here. I make it 3,600 to go. Only the initial raiser calls from middle position. So we go heads up out of position again to a flop. This time it's eight, four deuce with two hearts. This isn't necessarily the best board. I think the play here is to either bet big or check. I think I make a slight mistake here by down betting. I make it 2,400, but looking back, don't really love this play. Turns out it's not a problem though, because my opponent lets it go. So not a whole lot of action, but we do pick up over $4,000 in profit without much of a contest. In the third interesting hand, you guys should know we are playing a side game here where each player puts $200 on the button when it's their turn to be the button. 
if that makes sense. And only the guy in the small blind can win this money. What that means is there is a bounty building on the button every hand, and it continues to build until the small blind wins a pot and shows the hand. That's the only way this bounty can be collected. And in this next hand, I am in the small blind, which means I've got an opportunity to win what is now around $2,800 that has accumulated on this button. So a little extra incentive to win it. Turns out we don't need much incentive though because we've got pocket aces. Talk about running good. Not only is no one going to believe us because we are in the small blind, but of course we could be up against real hands as well to make some money from. The straddle is on for 200. There's an early position open to 500. And then late position shoves all in for $5,400 before it even gets to me. That's what you call the dream in this game of No Limit Texas Hold'em. I've got no decision, of course, with aces. I just call the 5,400. Fingers crossed that the guy who opened to 500 sticks around, but he does not. So we're going to go heads up to a run out. No more action to be had since the late position player is already all in. I just show right away. Never interested in making players show lesser hands. If he gets lucky, he gets lucky, but we run it twice and... Indeed, aces hold on both. So we pocket a bunch of money on this one, the pot plus what was on the button. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a pretty sweet hand. Things are going great tonight. Let's see if we can keep that going. There's a middle position open to 500 in this next hand. I am on the button with pocket fives. Happy to call a fair amount of hands on the button that in other positions might be a bit trickier to play, but we have ultimate last decision on every street. So I just call. Big blind makes the call, as does the straddler. So we're going to go four ways to a flop, which is right in line with how the rest of the day has been going. It's 9-5-4 with two diamonds. That is middle set on quite the draw-heavy board. Action checks around to the player in middle position. He's the initial raiser who decides to continue firing on this board, despite it perhaps being a little bit sketchy and also having three opponents in the hand. He puts in 800 bucks. Now it's on me on the button, and of course a raise is perfectly normal. But I would have a fair amount of hands that just call in position and I think calling is also cool because it allows the players behind to utilize the old check raise which in this situation would be pretty cool for me since I've got a monster so I just call raising again totally fine but this time I flat both of the guys behind me fold though so not exactly what I was hoping for either way though we still have a strong hand as we go in position to a turn which is the eight of clubs kind of dicey six seven now gets there but I'm not too worried about my opponent having that hand the only thing I don't love about this card is say he's got an overpair or some sort of strong holding it's going to be a little tougher to get value now since he can obviously see that 6-7 is now a straight as well. It seems he is perhaps worried about this because he now checks. I, of course, will be doing no such thing. My hand is way too strong, and not only that, but I would have plenty of bluffs in a situation like this. Say, for example, a hand like jack 10 of diamonds or five six of diamonds you guys get the idea i put in thirty two hundred dollars after which my opponent makes the call so things are shaping up nicely as we go to a river which doesn't change too much even though at first it looks kind of weird it's the three of clubs however seven six was already a straight so really all this changes is i guess a hand like ace deuce of diamonds gets there but not much concern aside from that my opponent checks it again and of course it's time to value bet here Despite there being potential straights, again, my hand is just way too good. Question is, how big do we want to bet? And usually when I'm wondering that, I just refer to how big would I bet with bluffs? Essentially, how big would all my hands want to bet in a situation like this? And in this spot, I think a big bet makes the most sense because we're either representing like a missed straight or a missed flush, or of course, a strong hand like what I've got in this case. So I throw in $10,000, a pot sized bet. My opponent does not love it. He does not snap call, but he also doesn't fold right away. After a few minutes of thinking, he decides to call. That looks like good news, and sure enough, pocket fives are good. $30,000 pot headed our way, and the day could not have started any better. Moving on to this next hand, I've got pocket kings this time. Poker is easy when you're just getting a lot of hands, you know? Straddle is on, I raise it up to 500 bucks and get called by the big blind and the straddler, so three ways to a flop of queen, queen, jack with a few clubs out there. Checks to me, could check back here, could bet small, this time I throw in a bet of $500. Both of my opponents make the call, which is a little bit concerning. Kind of unlikely that both of these guys have a jack, so I think either we're up against some sort of draws. Of course, at least one of these guys could have a jack. 
And the elephant in the room is that we might be up against trips and our kings are cracked. But hopefully that's not the case. Turn card is the seven of diamonds. It checks to me again. And this time I decide to check it back, see what happens on the river, which looks like a good card. It's the queen of diamonds, making it much less likely that we are up against flop trips since now that would be quads. And let's be honest, quads is a really difficult hand to make. I mean, when's the last time you had quads? You know what I mean? However, the big blind does lead out now, $1,200. Not the biggest bet ever. Straddler thinks for a bit and makes the call. And I feel like both of these guys probably have a jack. Maybe even the big blind missed some sort of draw, like say 10-9 suited, and is trying to steal the pot. And of course, the uh, guy behind in the straddle just calls with a jack since you know it's not the strongest hand ever yeah it's a full house but would it make sense to raise with that hand so with that going through my mind i think we could get away with a value raise here perhaps a little bit too thin but i think we could get called by a jack of course putting in a raise when one of these guys might have quads is a little scary so we'll just deal with that if it comes i make it seventy seven hundred dollars to go looking to get the max from a jack but now the big blind, after thinking about it for like a minute or two, announces all in for approximately $20,000. The straddler folds without much thought. Now it's back to me. It's 13,000 to call into a pot that is much bigger than that now. And this is a disgusting spot. Be that as it may, it's tough to think of bluffs that this guy might have. Would he really turn a jack into some sort of sick bluff? trying to get me to fold aces or kings probably not would he really turn a missed draw into a bluff like this maybe he'd have to be a psycho and even psychos probably wouldn't do that too often so yeah it's tough to uh you know give someone credit for four of a kind but in the end after thinking it over that's exactly what i do by letting the pocket kings go and luckily my opponent is kind enough to show that he does indeed have the queen of hearts. So we save some money on the river. Perhaps should have just called, but that seems a bit too timid with a hand as strong as queens full of kings. So kind of like how I played this one and it's always nice to see when you make the right decision. Not something I say too often, especially with what I consider to be a hero fold. Maybe to you guys that's a standard fold. That is probably a problem if it is. But anyway, we move on to this next hand where the straddle is on. Early position opens to 500 bucks, and once more I am on the button with a playable hand. This time it's King Jack of Hearts. Like I said earlier, just calling on the button seems good to me, so that's what I do. Re-raise would have been fine too, but this time I just call, as does the big blind. So we go three ways to a flop, which comes down Queen 7-3 with two hearts. I've got a backdoor straight draw, and of course the obvious flush draw to go along with it. Action checks to me and could check back and take the free card, or could just start bluffing now. Plenty of hands I would be betting for value, like top pair, flop sets, etc. I bet $1,100, the straddler folds, but now the early position player puts in the unorthodox check raise as the pre-flop raiser on the flop. Not something you see too often, but I think it's kind of cool. Of course, I am going nowhere just yet since I am drawing to the second nuts. So I make the call, kind of kicking myself for betting the flop. However, we're off to a turn, looking for some help, like of course a heart, but also maybe a 10 or an ace, perhaps a nine, you know, something that would give me a straight draw. Instead, it is the seven of clubs, which is one of the worst cards in the deck. It might even be the worst card in the deck, actually, not only because the board is paired, which is pretty bad when you have a flush draw, but it discredits me from having hands like pocket sevens, which is one of the credible bluffs that I might try to represent later on. My opponent now bets $3,200 and because this is such a bad turn, I decide to just let it go, wait for a better spot later on, which might just be this next hand. I've got seven deuce off suit. Now, I know what you're thinking, that is the terrible hand, but along with that button small blind game that I mentioned earlier, we are playing seven deuce at this table. If you are not familiar with that game, you gotta get out more, but essentially all it means is if you win with seven deuce and show it, everyone at the table owes you a bounty. In this case, it was $200 per player and $400 from the last guy to fold. We're playing eight-handed here, so if my math is correct, that comes out to $1,600 up for grabs if I'm able to win this hand. So, early position opens to 500, middle position calls, and we could go either way between just calling and trying to steal it post-flop, assuming we don't hit, which, let's face it, we probably won't with seven deuce offsuit. Or, option B is to re-raise pre-flop and just start pretending right away that I've got something good. 
That one sounds better to me, so I make it $2,000 to go. Early position Razor makes the call, as does the middle position player who initially called 500. So not exactly what I was hoping for, but at least we've got position. And if we get a good flop, we could represent some stuff. Comes down King Jack 3 with two hearts, and that is all the excuse I need. There are two cards out there that have a letter on them, and if I re raise pre flop, I might have some cards with letters on them. At least that's the train of thought that I'm hoping these guys follow as it checks to me, and I continue with a bet of $2,000. First player makes the fold. That looks like good news since the second guy is probably not going to be super strong on this kind of board unless he has like King Jack or Pocket Threes. But if he ain't got that, we're probably going to be able to win this one. And it turns out, not much resistance from either player. They both fold, so I turn it over, and not only are we winning $4,000 from the pot itself, but like I said, a bunch of money is coming from every player at the table. So we collect a bunch of chips in this one. In the following hand, I open Jack 10 offsuit to $500 and get called by a player in late position, as well as the small blind and straddler. So we're gonna go four ways to a flop, which is Jack, nine, four, two diamonds. Now action checks to me and being that we're four ways and I don't have ultimate last position, I think checking top pair is a good strategy. So you're not always so predictable, you know, it makes it so that sometimes you're going to be checking with good hands. Sometimes you're going to be weak, you know, remain unpredictable and all that. Turn card is the five of clubs action checks to me again. And even though betting here would probably be okay, I think checking is still the best option probably more money to be made by letting these guys either value bet a worse hand or try to steal the pot on the river in which case i'd have a pretty easy call with my slow played top pair river is the king of hearts not the best card of course since anyone with a king is now beating me but i don't think anyone here is going to have a king super often given how the hand has played especially pre-flop furthermore the action checks to me for a third time and now it sounds kind of weird but i think we can get away with a value bet and what I mean by that is if these guys are checking all the way down to the river, they probably have a nine, maybe a four or a five, some sort of showdown value, perhaps even a pocket pair that is just trying to get to the river. And they might think that I'm bluffing on a river that, you know, would be a good bluff card for me. Say I had a hand like ace queen, I might try to bluff on the river once the king comes. So I decide to put in a somewhat fancy value bet here with second pair, I bet $1,100. Late position folds. Now it's on the small blind and he thinks for quite a while. That seems to me like it's going according to plan. Eventually though, he does call. Player behind him folds and I turn over second pair. He says, that's good and flashes a nine. So not the biggest pot ever, but it does work out rather nicely as we use that king on the river to get some thin value, second pair versus third pair. In the following hand, there's an early position open to 500 bucks. Late position calls and I look down at ace jack in the small blind. Normally I would re-raise or fold in this situation, but once again, the small blind is the only player who could win all this money on the button. And what that means is we're probably not gonna get a whole lot of credit if I were to re-raise. On top of that, the player who opened to 500 in this hand from early position, he's been playing pretty damn tight. So I'm perhaps a little bit worried that we might face another raise. For those reasons, I decide to just call and see what happens. Comes down ace, seven, five, rainbow. I check, and now the early position player bets 700 as a continuation bet. Other guy folds and it's back to me. No point in raising, I think. And of course, folding is out of the question. So I make the call and we see the five of diamonds on the turn. I check it again and this time he checks it back. And then we see the five of spades on the river. Interesting spot now as we end up with a full house and presumably the nuts. The question is, do we want to bet or check? And I think it's a pretty clear bet after my opponent has checked back on the turn. If I had a hand like 8-6 suited or say 4-3 suited, 6-4 suited, these sorts of middling connectors that have completely missed and didn't want to check raise on the flop, I would definitely need to bluff this river to try to win the pot, try to get folds from king queen or queen high for example. So yeah, I think balancing that out with strong hands is the best strategy. That's what I do here. I put in a hefty bet. Would be doing the same with a bluff since I'm representing either a very strong hand or nothing whatsoever. 4,400 into the middle and all that analysis comes to nothing as my opponent snap calls. Seems to me that it's gonna be a chop and sure enough, he shows ace king. So we don't collect the small blind bounty, 
but we also got somewhat lucky on the river to end up chopping versus such a strong hand. With that, we move to this next one where I've got seven deuce again. You know what that means. It's time to win a pot or at least try to do it. $500 from me. I raise it on the button and only the straddler calls. Pretty good so far. We're only up against one guy and all these other dudes are talking, having a good time drinking. They're not paying attention. So when the flop comes down eight, four, three, and he checks it over to me, I quickly fire in a thousand dollars, hoping that he missed and is just not interested in this hand. And that's exactly what happens. He just lets it go. And real quickly and quietly, I turn over the seven deuce and the guys are not too happy. As you can see, they're throwing the chips somewhat frustrated that I snuck this one through. But that's how it is when the seven deuce game is on. You gotta be alert at all times. Unfortunately, this was the last interesting hand of the night as the game broke shortly after. But we did finish off the day with a $1,000 PLO flip five ways. That means there are $5,000 in the middle. We all get dealt four cards and see who's got the winner after the board runs out. Turns out I've got two pair. That's usually a good hand in No Limit Texas Hold'em. But in PLO, you're pretty much just praying that somehow it's the winner, especially on this kind of board. As you guys can see, there's all sorts of potential straights and sets and better two pairs available. And uh, yeah, two of these guys have a straight. One of them has ace king, which is the nuts, and we lose $1,000. But it was a break-even gamble, if you will. And uh, yeah, that was the last interesting moment of the night. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. This was a little more insight into what a private game in Vegas looks like. I had a great time and I will be back for more. Stay tuned for some final thoughts. You know, every time I visit the Aria, I'm impressed by its beauty. It's crazy how nice some of these Vegas hotels are. But anyway, checking in to uh, sign off on today's video. It went well overall. It was a really fun game. Uh, a lot of cool characters, really social crowd. That's always my preference. Um, and my preference is also to win, which is what happened today. I was in for 50K and cashed out for around 11,000 more than that. So. 11k profit, definitely a step in the right direction. Not quite enough to crawl out of the downswing from the last few months, but all in all, it's still still been a decent year. I've had a lot of fun and played some interesting poker. So on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed the hands. If you didn't, maybe try the next video or something. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys. As always, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Maybe consider subscribing or thumbs up or whatever I'm supposed to say as a YouTuber. That's enough talking. See y'all next time. Peace.